Hey guys, this is Ariana from Timefire, and today I'm going to show you how you can create the illusion of water caustics using a light function to fake the appearance of light refracting through water in your scene. The first thing you'll need to do is create a texture to use in the material. There are several ways to do this, but I chose to use Substance Designer. Here you can see I've brought in a plasma generator and set the distance parameter to 8. You can change this to whatever you like. I inverted the image and then put it through a levels node. I then played with the values until I got the level of contrast I was looking for, paying special attention to the sharpness of these lines here. After exporting the image from Designer, we'll need to create the material we're going to use for the light function. First, we'll need a texture coordinate node. I'll then bring in a component mask node. Use Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V to copy and paste it. Select the first one, and uncheck G from the Details panel. Uncheck R in the second one, and hook them up. This allows us to separate the UV coordinates from one another temporarily. We'll create a constant and convert it to a parameter. I'm going to name this parameter U-Tiling. We'll set the default value to 1, then copy and paste this parameter, and rename it to vTiling. We'll then create two multiplies and multiply our uTiling by our R component and multiply our vTiling by our G component. This will allow us to tile freely in the U and V directions when we create our material instance later. Right-click in the graph and search for the Append Vector node, and pipe our two multiplies into it. Next, we'll need to bring in a panner. Then, with it still selected, we'll change the speed x parameter to 0 0.05. We'll copy and paste it, and on the second one, we'll set the speed x back to 0 and speed y to 0 0.05. We'll pipe the append into the coordinate input of the first panner. For the second panner, we'll multiply the append result by 0.8 before plugging it into the coordinate input. This will vary the size of the image slightly to prevent overlapping when the two images are being panned. Now we'll grab our caustics alpha we made from the content browser and drag it into the material editor. We'll then copy and paste it, and hook one up to each panner. We'll bring in a lerp node to combine the two images together, and multiply the result by an intensity parameter. We'll set this to 1 by default. Last but not least, we'll click in a blank area of the graph and set the material domain to light function in the details panel. Now we'll just pipe the multiply into the emissive color. Here, I've just opened a new default level and brought in a spotlight. I'll pull it away from the ground a little bit. Scroll down in the Details panel until I find the Light Function section, and select the Water Caustics Material instance that I made from the material that we just built. Now we'll scroll up, 
and increase the light's intensity to exaggerate the effect. We can also change the color of this light. If we duplicate it a couple times, we can change the color for each light. Next, I'll open the material instance in another window and show what happens when we increase or decrease the intensity in tiling values. I'll move up the first light a little further and scale the inner and outer cone angles to see how the light changes. Light functions can also be applied to point lights and directional lights. So I'll select the light source in the level outliner and apply the effect there as well and change the color and intensity on this light also. In my level, I chose to use spotlights scaled up really large to give myself a little more control over the size and fall off of the effect and to add accents to bring attention to specific areas of the level. Here's what it looks like. That's it for this tutorial. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like it. And as always, thanks for watching.